Hi everyone, welcome to my channel. My name is Dave Thomas, also known as 7 Shot 9 and today's going to be tech video. Today we're going to be discussing Today we're going to be discussing F# -sharp and its metaprogramming capabilities. One of the most notable ones is type providers, but there's also three other methods which you can use. One of the mechanisms you can use is abstract syntax trees. In F# -sharp, the compiler exposes both an untyped AST and a typed AST. The untyped AST is provided before the type checker and the typed AST which is available after the type checker. The typed AST can be used to transpile the F# -sharp language to another language. The Fable Pal uses this for example. So I mentioned before that type providers were a metaprogramming capability which basically take a schema of some sort then convert that schema into types that are injected into your target assembly. Some of the benefits of type providers are that they integrate very tightly into your development environment and provide IntelliSense and completion so they're quite powerful although they have some important limitations which I may cover in a future video. I wanted to talk today about was f -sharp quotations. So f -sharp quotations are useful when you want to transform the f -sharp language into another language which is not necessarily exactly like f -sharp. For example, you could use them to translate an f -sharp expression into the shared language or, or C or another language which would ne not necessarily look like like F# -sharp. now F# -sharp quotations work in two different ways. One of the ways it works is it uses either programmatic access to the API, and you can also use quotation literals, which lets you wrap a fragment of F# -sharp code and allow you to use that programmatically. It basically captures the abstract syntax tree nodes of that expression and allows you to either transverse them or transform them into, into something else. So now we've talked about quotations for a little while, let's dig into a couple of examples to show that how they can be used. I'm going to show you how to quote a basic expression and how to traverse over a couple of different quotations. So let's have a look at those now. There's two main ways of using quotations. The first one, and the one that you'll use most often, is the quotation literal operators typed version, which is this one. There is an untyped version, which is this one. So I'll show you how to use these operators. First of all, we will open up a couple of namespaces just so we've got access to the active patterns and things we need to use. To use the quotation literals, the most simple one would be to quote a very simple function. Create a function called qliteral and we will use one of the typed quotation literals. We'll call this add and multiply. We'll give it two parameters. We'll break this down just so we can get a, a few more expressions in the resulting tree. And we will then return first plus second. It's just a simple function to show you what you can do. Now that we've finished that, you'll now notice that this tells you that the, follow, the block following the letter is in, unfinished. In, an, in a normal F sharp, piece of code, the let binding would be then followed by another piece of code. But with a quotation literal, we have to complete the expression. So we can do that by using the verbose syntax. And there we go. Now we have our very first quotation literal. If we send these to f -sharp Interactive, you can then get your first glimpse at what this will look like. So you can see in this section here, we've got the quotation, the qliteral declared. We can see the resulting syntax tree here. So we've got a let, add multiply, lambda a in lambda b in let first equals a call to op addition, which is our plus operator, passing in the operands a and b in let second is a call to multiply in a call of op addition, passing in first and second, which is this and this. You can do this in both typed and untyped forms. If we make this an untyped version and send this to interactive, you'll notice it's exactly the same. The only thing different is that inside these expressions is they're untyped. So moving on now, we'll cover splicing. Now we do splicing with the percentage of operator. A quick example of that, we will declare let splicing equals, and we will now create another quotation literal, Q literal, as a spliced operator, and then we'll pass in two and three. Now we have to surround this with parentheses. There we go. So now if we send this to interactive, so now when we use this, we're actually splicing the tree that's inside this quotation 
into this quotation. So you'll be able to see there's two applications. There's a left binding, lambda, lambda, and then we've got our, the, the first tree there. And then finally, we've got the values two and three, which we'll pass in here via the application nodes. Another thing that you can do is to traverse them. In this function, we will it will take an expression and we will traverse over the different elements within the syntax tree. There's a whole bunch of active patterns to match the different elements of the, the syntax tree. For example, if you look in here, there's application, lambdas, lets, calls, and lot values. And there's an active pattern that, that matches each node type. What we can do is we can now use pattern matching with a bunch of different active patterns. So let's match on an application because we can see there's one here. The application has expression one and an expression two. We will simply print these out. To traverse further down a tree and to make this actually do something, we need to use the expression one and expression two to further process them. We will pass those back into the traverse function and we will also traverse E2. Create a wildcard to match everything else. If we send that to interactive, we've now got our traverse function. If we pass the Q literal we created earlier. Let's add another few nodes to this to process. Let's reband that in interact and send this back. So now you can see we're traversing the let node and two other nodes. You can go ahead and add in a whole host of different active patterns here. Let's just add a final one. We'll add one for a lambda. Send this interactive and then we'll traverse. We've got let, lambda, lambda, let, other, let, other, other, other. So for other, we could also change our print statement so we could see what other types of nodes there is as well. Traverse again. We can see let, lambda, lambda, let, other, which is a call. So we could add that to our list if we wanted to. We now open expression share. Um, derived patterns. We'll send that to interactive now. When you're manipulating large pieces of F# -sharp code with a quotation, you can use some of the larger building blocks to traverse over. There's three different types. Shape var would be all the variables. Shape lambda, all the lambda expressions, and shape combination covers all these types of nodes. Another really cool thing you can do with it is you can substitute expressions as well. So you can kind of substitute a certain piece of the syntax node with a different type. So again, this is going to be recursive because it's going to be calling itself and we're going to be using shape var map that back so these big three pieces the shape var was the first one that covers any type of verb shape lambda is the second one which covers all the lambda expressions convert that back to expression lambda again because this allows us to traverse over the expression and return another expression in its place. So this is going to be an expression lambda where we're simply going to be the var back in but the lambda we allow a chance for the contents of that to be changed so we will pass that back. In. The final one is shape combination and that covers everything else so this will be a shape combo and that has a list of expressions. There is a function called rebuild shape combination, which is a helper, which allows us to rebuild this. We pass back in the shape combo. Again, we need to map the list of our expressions back into substitute expression. We use list.map, pass in substitute expression and our expressions. It won't particularly do anything. One plus one. So we can see there we've got a call expression op addition. It's the same as it was, it's just one plus one. Just say we wanted to change the plus, we could add another expression here to match at a finer grained level. We can use one called specific call and into that we can pass a quotation literal, which represents the addition operator. And inside this, we just need the operand, which is the, the third one. Left hand side, and we can get the first one of those from list.head. So now we've got the first, the head of the list and the tail of the list, which will be the, the two operands for the, the plus operator. And now we can create a quotation literal. We can use the splicing operators. Because this is a, a, a non-typed one, we have to use the non-typed splice operators, which is two percentages, which I, I forgot to mention earlier. But we can do left-hand side, minus right-hand side because the tail of course was the tail of the list, which is one of our nodes. If we send this back to FSI, 
we get back op subtraction, which is it's really cool because now we can pass through quotation literal and we can transform it arbitrarily to something else. So as you can see, there's some fairly basic operations that you can do with quotations. I'd like to dig deeper in a future episode because they're, they're really powerful tools, but there are some specific limitations and there's some hints and tips that I've got that make life easier, especially when you use them with reflection or type providers. As always, if you got this far, why not subscribe to my channel? Hit that like button if you like this video. In the description section, I'll leave any links to anything I've mentioned in this video. Please feel free to drop any comment suggestions. I really like to get comments from you guys. And I will see you next time.